welcome to Sard's Audio Fan Fictions. I'm Sard. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we will be continuing on with Chapter 16 of November's Secret by Lana Berry. If you'd like to follow along or just read ahead for yourself, please check out Lana Berry's author page in the description links below. There, you should find links to past episodes and chapters, as well as a link to our Let's Chat page, where you can vote on our next upcoming fic, as well as offer comments, suggestions, as well as our Discord. Right, with all that out of the way, this is going to be a long one, so let's get to it. Happy listening. Chapter 16 All That I Want Yuri knew better than most what it meant to give a piece of yourself to someone in a show of trust. He'd hidden himself away, curled under layer upon layer, until the persona around him walked and talked for him. What was meant to start as a disguise to create confidence soon became a very piece of his being, until it got harder to distinguish between them. Everything Ren did, he did it to protect Yuri. Everything Yuri did, he did it to push Ren further. Every time he opened Ren up to show himself, Yuri was trusting someone with not just his secret, but his feelings, his thoughts, his life. He was giving them power as a form of trust. As he had done with Celestino and Peachy, Yuri found it easier to show himself as Yuri before they got too attached to Ren before they could get close enough to only one. It was why it was so hard telling Victor his real name. It was also why it was such a bigger risk. For years, Victor had known only Ren Himra. Everyone knew that there was someone underneath that, under the mask and the fake name, but no one knew the real extent of that disguise. Yuri saw as Victor got closer to Ren and as Yuri wanted to get closer as himself, the worry that Victor would reject him because he wasn't Ren kept rising. But he also knew there would never be a chance to go further if he didn't take this one step, face this one risk. He was sure Victor would never understand the importance of such a decision. He would never know the anxiety that accompanied it the days afterwards worrying if he had made the right choice. He never worried the man was going to tell his secret to the world, but he was worried that the man would want Ren, would see the mess that Yuri was and want to go back. He also worried about failure, that now that his idol knew who he was, he had nowhere to hide if something went wrong. And though he hadn't shown Victor his face yet, his name was the first stepping stone. With his name, the layers were slowly peeling away. No, Victor would never understand just how important this was to Yuri. But without knowing, Victor drove those worries away. In the space between the Grand Prix Final and the World Championship, when they had had to travel back to their own home ranks, they had stayed in contact. Yuri had been happy with texts, but the other man seemed keen on hearing his voice. And every single time Yuri answered the phone to hear Victor greet him with his own name, a breathless and joyous, Yuri! He was warmed from his very core. Victor tried everything he could to get to his center beyond Ren and to where Yuri was hiding. He wanted to know Yuri's favorite things, what he thought about TV programs, films, what he wanted to do later in life. He didn't ask how Ren was doing, what Ren was thinking for next season, how he was in the countdown to worlds. No, every conversation consisted of mundane things and his real name repeated over and over as if Victor couldn't get enough of it. It clenched his heart, and he was reminded again and again that he had made the right choice. 
that maybe there really was a chance that he could be with Victor. He even found himself entertaining the idea of showing the man his real face. He found himself in his home rink's bathroom, holding his phone tightly to his chest. In the privacy of the cubicle, he removed his mask and waited for the other man to call. They had fallen into a sort of routine, slinking away for just ten minutes to talk when they could every day. He jumped when his phone began to ring. He greeted it with a nervous, Hello? Yuri! He really should have been used to the sound of his name by now, but he couldn't help but feel euphoric that his love knew it. Victor, he replied. Afternoon to you. And morning to you. Victor shuffled a little, fiddling with something on the other end. He grunted, cursing in Russian under his breath. What are you doing? Well, I went to the shop to go get something to eat for tonight, and I don't know why, but Makachin decided to destroy my living room and now I'm cleaning it up. Yuri laughed at the frustration seeping into the man's voice, and he could already imagine the scene before him. He hadn't ever met Makachin, but had seen enough videos and photos to know exactly what expression he would have. Head tilted, limp ears hanging cutely, whining as if there was nothing wrong. You can always call me later. It sounds like you have your hands full. No, no, it's okay. I like hearing your voice. He's helping me to cope. Hang on, I'll send a photo of the criminal now. Yuri's phone pinged with a message. Still on call, he quickly tabbed out to view it. Just as he thought, Makachim was sitting with his head tilted to one side, an adorable pout, and big black shining eyes that screamed innocence. However, around him were ruined cushions, stuffing torn from them, food spilled onto the plush carpet, mud tracks all over the sofa. Yuri brought the call tab back and could barely hold himself from saying, Aw, he's so cute! Yuri! Yes, Yuri decided. He really liked Victor's voice singing his name. It really hadn't been a mistake. He didn't have to worry. Didn't have to think that Victor only saw Ren. Yuri had a chance. And for the first time, he could see his chance as a very real thing. He wanted to hear Victor say his name for years to come. He was excited to skate his winning programs again. Not because he thought that they would give him another gold at Worlds, but because he had become increasingly proud of them after seeing people's reactions online. He didn't need their acceptance for him to love them, but he liked to see that people enjoyed them just as much as he did. Their own thoughts and stories on them, how they perceived the things he skated, he knew that they would never understand them like he did, but that didn't mean that they couldn't understand it in their own way. He looked over their comments on news articles and from clips that had been uploaded. It took him back to the seasons he had spent off, healing, and searching for clips of Victor in his own competitive seasons. He never commented, felt much too nervous to, but he had agreed with all of their love and praises. Now, it seemed, he was on the other end of that. He wanted to make his fans proud of their loyalty. He wanted them to see how much they did for him, because while he found it nerve-wracking to have fans that relied on him at all, he found their support immense, like a foundation, saying he was enough. The World Championships were starting up, and he was in the bathroom getting ready. This time, he had made sure to lock it. Checked three times. He had been lucky before. Victor had been the one to walk in, and because of their mutual respect, the man had not given in to curiosity. But just as easily, a reporter could have been the one to happen on the scene, and he knew they would not have handled it as well. He was washing his face, spilling cold water against his skin. It was an old routine of his, made from years of nerves, and the cool water calmed him. 
though he was not as nervous this time around. Hadn't been for a long time. It gave him time to himself and out of the public eye to really think about things. Yuri spent so much time in his own head, sometimes for the best and sometimes not. But he knew he needed this time to be able to do his best. Pijit stood outside the bathroom, an extra safety precaution, and Yuri could hear him talking to someone outside. He had been overjoyed when Pichit had said he would come to Worlds with him. He'd had so much fun with the other boy in the Grand Prix that he felt he couldn't go back to being alone again. He knew he had Celestino, but just having the other boy with him, someone closer in age, made him feel better. Celestino knew this, had seen it, and so had no complaint in bringing Pichit along as long as he didn't have any other competitions. Yuri had already received news that his family were staying up late to watch. Yuko and her husband unfortunately couldn't, not with their girls being so young, but promised to watch the highlights the next day. They made him promise to try his best at getting the gold again. He had the potential to become world champion. He knew, in contrast, winning the Grand Prix final wasn't anything like worlds. Victor was still world champion, had been for a few years running, and the world would see him as a true competitor to the legend once he took gold at such a high competition. That was why Yuri wanted to take some time to collect himself now. There were more reporters outside in the rink than he had seen before. More noise from the crowds, more cameras flashing than he remembered last time. The potential that Victor could be pushed off of the podium here to lose his world champion title right here drew all the broadcasters in like bears to honey. They all wanted to be there when history was made. And if it wasn't? Well, it proved it would be a competition to see regardless. Yuri splashed more water onto his face at the thought feeling the anxiety trying to push through. But Ren was keeping him safe, exchanging the nerves for excitement, constantly running the image of them at the top of the podium again through his head. World champion. Now, wasn't that a nice title to have? He'd felt a little nervous taking the Grand Prix final champion from Victor but had been warm to his very core when he saw the reaction from the other man. He had been supportive, even took it as a challenge for next year. Going into Worlds, he felt more compelled to topple the man off the top spot just to see those eyes watching him again. He could prove that he was worthy of that attention. If not as a potential romantic partner, then as a competitor. With that in mind, Yuri left the bathroom after placing his mask back on, joined by Pichit outside the door. Feeling all right? The other asked, stepping level with Yuri. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually feeling excited. I mean, I did before, but now. He didn't know how to explain it, but this excitement felt different. He was finally seen as someone who could be with Victor, be on top of the podium, the one that could break Victor's records. The excitement that accompanied the idea that he could prove to them all that he deserved to be by his side was intoxicating. Yuri had spent his whole life trying to prove his worth, and it had amounted to this. Peachy placed a comforting hand on his shoulder and carefully said, I get it. It's all right. Of course, if anyone was going to understand, it was going to be another skater. The rink was filling up with audience members. Some stood finding their seats while others had been sitting since the doors had been opened. It took a moment for the world to see him. Just a second. 
before all the cameras were turned on him and the audience was cheering. Skaters warming up on the ice turned at the notice, and Yuri didn't miss some of the glares of younger competitors as they threw it his way. He knew what that was like. He knew that his admiration for Victor could have easily turned to jealousy and anger had he been that way inclined. Had he been a bitterer person, he could have been jealous of the way Victor seemed to easily breathe his programs and jumps as if he hadn't dedicated hours upon hours of work into them. And Yuri knew that if he hadn't had Ren, it could even more easily have turned out that way. He was still jealous of the way Victor seemed to jump so effortlessly. But he also used that to better his own. It was easy to hate the ones who won over and over again, especially when it seemed they were unbeatable. As they found Celestino reserving a bench for them, the man stood and greeted them with a smile. Ren, he said, bringing him and Peachy into a hug as if he hadn't just seen them half an hour ago. Have you seen the response? All of these journalists, cameras, lights... All of the blogs online have been talking about it. Your name is just as big as Victor's. Yeah, I've looked around a bit. World was always such a big competition, but it seemed that the competition between him and Victor had brought out curiosity from people who didn't even watch the sport. A sense of pride welled up inside of him at the thought. Of course... It doesn't mean you have to pressure yourself to beat him again, Ren. Celestino assured, placing both of his hands on Yuri's shoulders. Just have fun. Just skate your best, all right? Of course he felt pressure. He felt it every time the journalists looked at him, every time his fans called out his name in every word he saw written down about him. He felt the pressure and it was suffocating. But he built Ren to handle this. Yuri was safe inside Ren. He reminded himself time and time again, if Ren fell apart at the most crucial moment, then he clearly hadn't done well enough. I know, he replied. I've done it once. I can do it again but I'm not going to make it my only thought. Celestino looked relieved. Good. Just remembered you're more than what the journalists make you. Yuri knew how much of a worry he had been for his coach for all these years. He'd probably heard about his background and the start of his obsession with creating a persona from his tutor, a good friend of his. He'd probably not taken it seriously thinking Yuri was doing it as a media ploy, or that his anxiety wasn't really that drastic. Until he met Yuri. Yuri knew that in the four years he spent healing, Celestino had carefully helped him, and in that time his coach had seen how very real his fear was. He'd been encouraging helped build up the persona, urged Yuri to continue skating whenever he wanted, took out hours to help him train. He'd been there when Ren wasn't quite finished yet, had seen the persona slip a few times, and seen Yuri devastated because of it. Yuri knew that Celestino had worried that when Yuri did finally make his senior debut, that he wasn't really ready. Maybe Ren wasn't fully constructed, or it wasn't enough. One slip-up, and Ren was useless. He worried that the anxiety would take over one day, and Yuri knew that that fear never really went away, not even when he continued winning medals. In fact, Celestino's fear only grew. Yuri was so high now, or more, Ren Himura was. The higher you are, the harder the fall, as the saying goes. If Yuri fell from this height, 
it was going to ruin everything. Yuri knew that Celestino shouldn't have to deal with such a mess, especially as he would be the one to deal with it if it came. Not many coaches would stick with Yuri because of it. It was why Yuri thanked Celestino for sticking with him, but not just out of duty. It was clear that Celestino liked him as a person and wanted to help him because of it. Yuri had so many pillars in his life that it helped keep him from falling. And he just didn't know how to thank all of them enough. Everything settled down properly as the competition began. Yuri watched some of his fellow competitors, appreciating their movements and the raw emotions in their programs. Some names he remembered from watching for years. Others knew. It's so big! Peachy gasped. Yuri turned, seeing his friend gasping as he glanced around the rink, his eyes flitting between the cameras, the ice, the screen, the numbers, the flags, everything. He knew how overwhelming it could be, remembered his own feelings of the competition when he first saw it all. Yeah, it is. He listened more as Peachy continued to whisper his awe, mumbling about how he couldn't wait to compete on such a big stage in such a big competition. Yuri said how he wished to see Peachy here soon. Soon enough, it was Chris's turn on the ice. Yuri dedicated all of his attention to the man, sending good thoughts towards him. The music settled in. Chris moved with it. And the audience were enraptured. No matter how many times Yuri watched it, he was surprised by Chris's choice of drastic change to his genre. The audience had come to know Chris as one thing, even if he could evolve in that one thing in ways that no one expected. It just proved that the sport was always evolving, and not because of the outside influences, but because of the skaters themselves. Those who dedicated their lives to the ice, only they could change its meaning. His change seemed to have caught the audience and the journalists in a way that they had never seen him before. Chris had always been a good skater, but never ventured farther than the skater that brought sex appeal. In some eyes, he wasn't a competitor. Always one curse to never get higher than silver. And yet here he was, as if an entirely new skater and the onlookers were lapping it up. Yuri's eyes found Chris's coach, nervously waiting beside the barrier. He was watching Chris carefully, his eyes following his every movement, just as every coach did. Yuri had seen the man before, wandering behind Chris and at training sessions, but he'd never spoken to him. In fact, thinking about it, he had never spoken to Victor's and Gyorgy's coach. Should he have? Was it respectful to speak to other coaches as Celestino did? Wrapped in his thoughts, Yuri almost missed Chris as he changed one of his quad toe loops into a quad saucal, earning a deafening gasp throughout the rink. Yuri nearly jumped up when he noticed the very, very slight wobble in the man's frame upon the landing, but landed it all the same and skated off with a subtle, triumphant expression on his face. Yuri watched on with pride, a swelling feeling that only a friend could have, when he saw the way the journalists were enthralled by the performance. He'd seen them disregard Chris for years as a competitor that was good, but not good enough. They were wrong. They were so wrong. Chris came to the end of his short program, waving in his finishing pose as flowers and plushy hearts were thrown his way. As soon as the program was finished, though, his sex appeal ramped right back up, and he blew kisses to the crowd, melting them into a pile of screaming goo. Victor was straight after, passing Chris as the Swiss was on his way to the kiss and cry. 
They exchanged quick words, familiar smiles on their faces. As Victor readied himself on the ice, tugging at his costume sleeves, Chris waited for his scores. When they did come in after a short but tense waiting time, it placed Chris above all else. With Victor and Yuri and others left to go, there was still time for change. But Chris smiled happily, congratulated by his coach, and held his head high as if it was the first time he had ever been in this situation. Victor's music began. He glided into his program effortlessly, and the audience were already caught. The journalists went wild snapping photos at every second, all hoping to gather that one perfect photo that would be on the cover of every magazine and all over the internet. Not a second went by that a flash of the camera or the sound of a shutter occupied the piece in Victor's music. And yet, like the professional that he was, it never affected him. Yuri knew that he would never grow tired of watching Victor skate. He knew also that he wasn't the only one thinking it. He wasn't alone in his admiration or even loving the man. That there were thousands more, some even here in the stands. There were a lot of things he knew about himself when it came to Victor. A lot of hard things that he had had to learn along the way. Many things that didn't come without their pain. But he also knew that Victor felt the same about Yuri's programs. Victor had told him as much in one of their numerous phone conversations, that he loved to see Yuri skate, that it brought him inspiration and drive. So many compliments had been handed to Yuri from the other man that sometimes he wondered if Victor even knew what he did himself, how people saw him. How would Victor act if it was the other way around? That Yuri was the legend and Victor had grown up admiring him. Would it have been the same? Would Victor have admired him with as much intensity? Yuri shook his head and watched Victor skate. There were far too many questions inside his head and many of them would never find answers. He didn't need to ask them. He just needed to feel to watch Victor. Victor was coming to the end soon, and Yuri cursed himself for not paying more attention. But sometimes he just became so lost in something that his thoughts swirled. He couldn't think of anything else. He leaned forwards in his seat and watched as Victor performed his last jump, his signature move of the quad flip, a spur-of-the-moment move that Yuri suspected might have been the accumulation of Chris's change and his drive to remain world champion. The audience lapped it up, gasping and screaming, the commentators praising it as being just as flawless as every time Victor performed it. Unsurprisingly, Victor's scores shot him up to the very top. He waved and bowed to the crowd as a sign of thanks, a bouquet of flowers held tightly in his arms. There was one skater between Victor and Yuri, a skater Yuri recognized as one that didn't make it through to the free skate last year. He looked racked with nerves, taking a moment to breathe in before he began. Yuri saw what he would have become in the man. Though he handled it well, there were a few shakes in his frame, one touch on the ice when he under-rotated a quad that should have become a combination. He saw the anxiety, the fear and yet he admired and respected the man for continuing. Yuri wasn't sure what he would have done in his place. He certainly would not have just given up, but he wouldn't have tried as hard as the man before him was. He wouldn't have looked so determined. It was for that reason that Yuri found he couldn't look away. With each wobble, each jump that just didn't go right, the man grew more and more fierce, putting everything he could into the step sequences. Yes, Yuri could see a lot of himself in this man. But this man hadn't needed a mask to make it this far. 
He had relied on himself alone, and that was where the differences and similarities verged. His name was called out, and he stood up, ready to perform the short program that had won him a gold medal. He could do this. Wren could do this. As he stepped past the skater that had come before him, Yuri stilled. The man looked dejected, his head slumped forward and his back arced. Yuri's heart went out to him. Yuri looked over at him, estimating the man was younger than him. Perhaps by a year? That could have so easily been Yuri. He stopped beside the man, and the movement surprised the other enough to stop too. He glanced up, his eyes wide when he saw just who was stopping, and made a mumbled apology. For what, Yuri didn't know, but he knew he just wanted to help the other. You did really well, he said, internally flinching by how patronizing it sounded. He hoped it didn't come across like that. Confidence isn't easy to gain, and nerves are... Anxiety isn't easy to live with. It's amazing that you managed to get out there and skate so well even with it. He wanted to say more. He wanted to tell the man everything that he himself had heard countless times in his years. He wanted to speak the words he had heard in quotes on blogs for years, what his friends had told him from programs on TV, from books to films, to inspirational speeches by influential people. He had so many words that he wanted to tell the man because he knew where he was coming from. And though they weren't always the answer, it had taken him years to believe in himself, they did lighten the weight. Sometimes it was just a good thing to know. But his name was called. He didn't have time, so he settled with, You are not your anxiety, and it's not you. Please take care of yourself. As he walked off, he felt the man's eyes following him. He probably shouldn't have said anything. The other person probably thought him vain or presumptuous. He probably had everything in control, and he wasn't making anything better. But wasn't it better to say something than nothing at all? People probably pitied the man, laughed at him. As Yuri took the ice, gliding to the middle, he breathed out. The idea that someone else had been going through the same things as he had, the same thing as he properly feared, it brought out a protective side to him. But he shouldn't be thinking about this. He cleared his mind and readied his starting pose. He had been so lost in his thoughts and worries for the man before him that he hadn't noticed the way the audience received him. They were cheering at the top of their lungs, waving their cards and signs and toys in a shock of color. The commentator spoke his name until it echoed in the rink, throwing out little facts about the man the audience knew as Ren Himura. From Japan, despite the competitiveness, was good friends with Chris and Victor, was only his second season back after a four-year break, liked to draw in his spare time. Honestly, he wasn't sure where they had received that information, but he wasn't about to correct them. The music chimed in. He found comfort in the way his arms graced the air around him as he touched his body. Reaching out into the air drew the audience in. He found comfort in the way his skates sliced through the ice, the sound hauntingly familiar, balanced so steadily. He found comfort in the air that blew past him as he jumped in the air, precise and careful. It might have sounded stupid to others, that the very thing that caused his anxiety he chased with everything he had, because the thing that caused his anxiety could also bring him comfort. Two very opposing results for the thing he spent most of his life doing. He supposed that only other skaters would be able to understand. And yet even then, most wouldn't. Most didn't suffer as he did with anxiety. 
the only thing that could cause him so much anxiety was the ice, and the only thing that could bring him just as much confidence was the ice. Putting it in words such as that, he realized that it sounded a little stupid. Or, no, not stupid. More strange. Not many people would understand it. Some might even think of it as a form of addiction. Wanting to chase his anxiety because it gave him a thrill. He had seen people say as much online about others before. As he skated, preparing for a jump, he quickly flicked his gaze over the audience. At this speed, he could barely pick out their expressions, nor could he hear anything they might have been chanting over the music. But he did see the signs shaking. He saw the flowers being thrown in the air, and that was enough to encourage him. He jumped to the best of his ability, still striving to make his jumps just as effortless as the others. He wobbled only slightly on his landing, however. He cursed himself slightly. He had been thinking too much again. Soon enough, his program came to an end. He skated into his last pose, then opened for the world. He skated into his last pose, opened for the world to see, and proud, regardless of the one mistake. Barely a mistake, he reminded himself. There wouldn't be too many points in deduction. His score came in just below Victor. One point difference. Going into the free skate, if the other skaters after him now didn't beat him, he would be going in second. As the other skaters began to take to the ice, the competition still in full swing, Yuri received a call from Yuko. He apologized to Celestino and Peachy and took himself off to the bowels of the building to receive the call. She picked up on the third ring. Hello? Yuri? Yuko? He asked, flushing just slightly. Of course it was Yuko. It was her phone number. Sorry I didn't pick up, but you should be sleeping anyway. It's late there. Yuko groaned. I know. Tell me about it. But I think you have some of your youngest fans here. They refused to sleep until you'd been on. Yuri huffed out a laugh, touched by the sentiment. The last time he had seen Yuko's triplets, they had only been one. But as he competed, Yuko had sent countless pictures of the three in their growing. Yuko hadn't planned on telling them exactly who Yuri was, that he and Ren were even the same person. But it had actually been Yuri that had accidentally told them. They'd been Skyping, and he assumed. He knew now how dangerous it was to assume. Yuri and Yuko had spent a long time trying to convince the three to keep the identity a secret, under the pact that once Yuri did decide to reveal himself, he would give them warning. They wanted to be the first ones to record it and put it online. Then there was Peachy, who wanted the first photo, and he never forgot the promise he made to their female journalist back when he was 19 of allowing her to be the first to interview him. He had made so many promises. And what did they think? Yuri asked. Amazing, of course. I was afraid they were going to wake up the neighbors with all of their screaming. Seriously, Yuri, you need to stop encouraging their behavior. I don't he chuckled. It's your fault for getting them into ice skating. With their father just as obsessed with it, the blame isn't just on me. They were doomed from the start, clearly. Yuko gave a quiet giggle. On the other end, Yuri heard Takashi's rough voice calling something out. There was a rushed whisper, then Yuko saying, We're trying to get them to bed now. They're only four, Yuri, and they're already rebelling against their parents. Just imagine them when they're teenagers. Oh, no. Yuko groaned, making Yuri burst out laughing. No, please, Yuri, don't tease me like that. I've heard nightmares about one teenager. I'm going to have three. Yuri couldn't imagine having children. At least, not at this stage in his life. He was too young, in his opinion. 
And yet, at the age he was already at, Yuko was already a mother of three two-year-olds. He'd been there when she became pregnant, had helped her all through the hormones, the morning sickness, the growing, the weight gain, the swelling, and back pains. Honestly, as hard as some of those months had been, it had helped Yuri heal in a way of distraction. He had something else to think about other than skating or his tutor's death. Something else to focus on, and sometimes that was all someone needed. Takashi had been young, too. Both he and Yuko were too young to have children. At least, that was what the old ladies of the town said when they had nothing better to do. They were going to be bad parents, they condemned. Young couples never stayed together, and the children were going to suffer for it. Yuri had seen how it had done the opposite, bringing the couple together, and he had seen how happy they were when the girls were born. Or more, he saw how happy Yuko was to have the three heavy babies out, and her stomach not so extended. Someday, maybe, he thought, but not right now. He could never imagine having children right now. He could always leave that dream to Yuko. He smiled to himself and assured, You and Takashi make great parents. And you'll handle it fine. If the worst comes to worse, just put on a skating video or something. It'll distract them. You're no help, Yuri. Sorry, sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. There was another call from Takashi. A rushed whisper from Yuko, and then she said, Sorry, Yuri, I have to go. But you did amazing. The girls, Takashi and I, wish you massive amounts of luck for tomorrow. And win that gold! At least this time we'll be more prepared, and the girls won't destroy our table in a fit of excitement. <laughs> okay. That I'm sorry for. No, you're not. Yuri laughed. <laughs> no. I'm really not. Good night, Yuri. Night, Yuko. Say good night to the girls and Takashi, too. After Yuko's confirmation, Yuri hung up. It always warmed him to speak to Yuko, her voice taking him back to years and years ago. He remembered that fateful day, the suggestion of the mask, and what would have happened had she not voiced the thought or even thought of it at all but it was time to return to Celestino and Peachy to watch the rest of the competition. The other skaters this year were talented. He hoped no one would take the spot from him going into the free skate, but that was a big possibility with some of the skaters he had seen enter. He turned the corner in the corridor, only to be greeted with someone standing in the middle, blocking his way. He didn't recognize her, doubted he had ever seen her before, but she lit up when he came into view. She looked pleasant enough, but there was something wrong. She was short, perhaps shorter than him, standing in the middle of the corridor, a notebook in hand and a pen in the other. The rest of the hall was quiet and empty, save for them, the only sound being the commentators on the speaker system. As she made a quiet gasp, echoed through the hall, he realized what it was that unsettled him. This was the way he had come to find privacy for the call. She had followed, and she had waited. Remembering another bad encounter with a journalist, he stepped back a little, his mind running through everything he could do to save himself. He was older now, had taken some self-defense classes as per Celestino's advice. He was ready. He was taller and he suspected stronger than her. He wouldn't be caught in the same situation. He cast a quick glance down the corridor he had just come, eager to make sure she didn't have a bigger, stronger accomplice. No, they were alone. Ren Himura! She greeted too cheerily, skipping forward. She stopped about ten feet in front of him, her curly brown hair bouncing around her face. Funny meeting you here. Is it a coping mechanism to take yourself off alone? As she spoke, she began writing something in her notebook. Her eyes were piercing. 
No, I had a call, he replied. Sorry, but who are you? Me? Oh, I'm Florence Hope, online blogger. Who are you calling? She spoke the name as if he should have known, but honestly, it meant nothing to him. Online blogger? he asked instead. Yep, sort of like a journalist, but without the strings. You know what I mean? She giggled, her voice too shrill and high. I give the people the news they want without the pesky rules. Rules. He wasn't sure what the woman meant, but he knew that there was something very wrong with that. He'd heard something about rules back when the journalists had attacked him, but was too traumatized to really listen. There were consequences for breaking said rules, whatever they were. What sort of news? Well, I specialize in sports. I travel the world to attend competitions like this and record them. We have thousands and thousands of followers, and we enlighten them. Right, he replied, unsure what to say. The woman flipped her hair over her shoulder and continued writing something down. Say, Ren, how do you feel about the World Championship this season? After winning the Grand Prix Final, it must feel like a new challenge, one to best. Uh, yeah, I suppose you could say that. And your competition? How do you feel about them? The short program isn't even over yet. I haven't gotten to see them all, but so far they seem very skilled. The woman laughed. But not in comparison to you and Victor, right? They're still very skilled, Yuri pressed. Anyone would be able to overtake me and Victor if they put their mind to it. The woman nodded and gave a slow wink. Right. No. Yuri really didn't like where this was going. Look, I need to get back to the competition, so if you don't mind... Okay, okay, I'll get straight to it then. She stepped closer again, tilting her head to the side. So, what's the real reason behind the mask? She chewed on her pen as she waited for an answer, her eyes boring straight into Yuri. There was something wrong about them, too. Yuri was shocked by the sudden question, stilled in his movement. It had come from nowhere, and yet he should have expected it. Just because he had managed to avoid such questions from journalists so far since the attack didn't mean that they would stop coming altogether. Apparently, his lack of response wasn't enough. Are any of the rumors correct? She asked. She bent low a little, stepping closer. I don't see any burn marks on your neck, so maybe not a burn victim? She wrote something quickly down. Maybe you really are a celebrity or a secret monarch, but I don't remember Japan having a monarch your age. Though, with that mask on, it's easy to convince people you're Japanese. You might not be. She wrote more down. I don't see why a celebrity would want to keep it a secret. I don't feel comfortable with this, he said, his voice a little too weak for his ears. He had been ready for a physical attack, not one so verbal. This felt wrong, like an invasion of privacy. But the woman ignored it, as if he hadn't said anything at all. Some think you're doing it as a publicity stunt but I don't see a young child of 11 deciding something so young. Unless, of course, you're that way inclined and have such patience. She kept writing things down. It was annoying him. There are rumors that you're actually a fugitive and hiding yourself right under the noses of the authorities. No, nothing like that. Please, I don't want to talk about this. Are you perhaps a porn star or have been? You wouldn't be able to continue skating if such a thing were to come out. Scribble, scribble, over and over. Perhaps you're in witness protection. She kept coming closer. She was about four feet away now. Yuri stepped back to get away, but she kept coming forwards. Personally, I believe you're using it as a distraction to gain more points. She paused, waiting for Yuri's reaction. What? I mean, you're not even that good a skater as it is. Your jumps are amateur. Your spins are just above good enough. The only thing you have going for you is the step sequences. However, it's easy to overlook these matters when the mystery is distracting people's judgments. It felt like cold water had been poured on him. He knew he shouldn't have been listening to the woman, but the shock of her words tore through him. No, he said almost desperately. No, nothing like that. It doesn't work like that. You've 
even got Victor wrapped around your little finger with your play. She said it with such venom. He didn't know why. What had he done to warrant such a reaction? He knew that some were bitter towards him, expecting his reasons for his mask to be attention. He'd read their comments online for years, heard it in interviews, even had to listen to some of his competitors in the locker room when he was young. He knew a lot of the responses to his choice of disguise. But no one had been so open about it for so long. He'd almost forgotten how powerful it was. No, he's chosen to be a friend. I didn't do anything. Was it your choice or both of your coach's choices? She asked, not giving Yuri nearly enough time to answer. Your first coach, his name wasn't very well known at all. So having a student like you could have shot him up right there with the greats. But your current, he's already pretty well known and a good coach. He doesn't need this attention to- No! No! Yuri shouted, pushing his answers forward. He hated people talking about him and taking his ideas the wrong way. He'd been prepared for them when he decided that hiding his identity was what he wanted to do. But that didn't mean he was going to lie down while his coaches were tarnished as well. No, it wasn't their choice. They just ran with it. So are you saying that you bullied them into accepting it? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I... She scribbled something down quickly, an odd smirk resting on the side of her face. Ren Himura, 21, loves attention and plays with the emotions of his fellow competitors and coaches. Quite the difference from the way the public sees you, don't you think? Yuri scrambled to say something else, but his words weren't coming fast enough. It was easy to run away if journalists began to use force. He had stamina and speed. He was good. But verbal abuse was always something he fell short with and something he couldn't just teach Ren. He could do interviews, but this was different. This was an attack, and he didn't know how to get out of it. Are you taking any performance-enhancing drugs? Every time he thought he had a handle on what she was going to say, she turned it on something else. What? he asked, stepping back until his back touched the wall. No, of course not. Now, wouldn't that be some drama? She giggled, writing something down. Your stamina has always been a topic of debate, something that even trained professionals are jealous of. Just where does it come from? Yuri felt his chest tightening. No rules, he reminded himself. She played by no rules. She didn't care. She could write anything, and it wouldn't matter if it was the truth or not. He'd known about some of the news sites that only put out what they thought their readers wanted to see, clickbaiting them until they had all the views they wanted. She could write anything. Anything. It was going to hurt his reputation, to an extent. That wasn't what he cared about. But it would harm Wren. And he wasn't sure what he would ever be able to do without Wren. He'd spent so many years protecting him, being him, that he couldn't ever imagine losing him. Back to being Yuri. Just Yuri. He gripped the material of his costume before his chest. His breaths were hard to come out. He felt heavy. Everything before his eyes were blurring. He could hear her still speaking, could see her getting closer, but everything hurt and he couldn't focus. He'd known. He should have known. Journalists and reporters hadn't become easier to handle or more tolerant. He'd just been able to avoid ones like this. He should have known not to be alone. At least with someone attacking him, he knew what they were after. This time, he didn't know what to do. Someone was touching him. He weakly moved to the side, trying to get away. Arms wrapped around him. He was comforting, and everything began to clear. The woman was still before him, but between them were two bodies, shielding her from Yuri's view. When he made a choked sob as he tried to breathe, the arms around him hugged tighter. Without looking up, he knew who it was. Uh, Victor? The warmth was more than comforting, and the gentle squeeze brought him back from his panic. His heart was still hammering inside of his chest, but he had a chance to calm down. His gaze grazed over the backs of the two men between him and the woman, recognizing Yorgi easily. Beside him, a shorter, older man stood. Yuri thought it must have been Yakov, Victor's coach. 
whispered so quietly that only they could hear, Victor said, It's okay, Yuri. But it sort of wasn't, he thought. He hadn't been prepared. Ren was created to combat so many situations, and to a small degree even this, but he hadn't planned on being alone when it happened. He hadn't planned such accusations. It was all well and good to give Ren confidence, to teach him what to say when it came to interviews or any interactions that might have caused Yuri anxiety. But when the interviewer or the accuser barely let him get words out, throwing everything at him, pushing him into the corner, even the most confident person could break down. But it also sort of was, he thought. Because as soon as he heard Victor whispering his name, hugging him, holding him tightly in comfort, it warmed something inside of him. It calmed his beating heart. It chased away his anxiety and he could feel himself coming down again. He had time to still and find peace, allowing Yuri to go back into hiding and for Ren to rise again. He melted into Victor breathing deeply as the other man rubbed his back. Yakov and Georgi were yelling something, and the girl was yelling back. There were footsteps. He thought there might have been more people coming, but Yuri wasn't really paying attention. He burrowed himself further into Victor, pressing his mask into Victor's shoulder, hiding himself away. He should have felt guilty, and thought that Ren wouldn't act like this. Except he was. Even Ren right now wanted comfort. Come on, Yuri. Yakov said he and Georgi are going to deal with it and get your coach for you. Let's go somewhere to calm you down. Victor spoke in his ear. Yuri followed Victor blindly, allowing the man to take him somewhere, clinging and not wanting to separate for even a second. He wasn't sure how far they walked or really what room they had entered. He was just aware that Victor had sat him down and was kneeling before him, holding his hands tightly. Yuri, it's okay. We're alone now. Are you all right? Yuri looked down at the man before him, finding the concern in his face heartwarming. Yes, he decided. He really liked Victor calling him by his real name. He nodded and said, Yes, I'm actually feeling much better now. Thank you. He'd forgotten what it was like to panic. Ren had been protection for him for so long, encouraging Yuri to grow stronger because of it, that situations that usually caused him to worry didn't affect him anymore. He should have been curling into a ball right now, a nervous ball of anxiety thrumming with panic. But he wasn't. He'd been close. But he'd come out of it. It didn't seem to convince Victor too much, though. He asked, Are you sure? Yuri found himself laughing. Just a small chuckle. But the look on Victor's face was so endearing. And he'd even seen it a few times on Vikchan's face. Yes, Victor. I'm sure. Victor took a deep breath and nodded. Okay. You looked really frightened, though. I was worried. You can't even see my face. How did you know? Body language. You were shaking, Yuri. I've never seen you like that. No, Yuri thought. No one really had. No one but his family, Celestino and Pichit only the ones who knew how deeply the anxiety touched. He never planned on Victor seeing him like this either. Ren didn't shake. He didn't fear things. And yet, oddly enough, he didn't worry that Victor had seen him like this. Because this was Yuri. And if Yuri wanted even a little chance with Victor, then he needed to see everything, didn't he? Yuri had to be willing to show him everything. 
give Victor a chance to back out if he wanted to. What did she say to you? Victor asked. Just things. Like, like accusing me. Saying I had everyone wrapped around my little finger, doing this for attention. The usual. Things that he was used to. Things he'd read a hundred times, and yet from her mouth, dripping with her venom and bitterness, they seemed so much worse. She also accused me of taking performance-enhancing drugs. I didn't really care. People have made assumptions like that before. I didn't really care. People have made assumptions like that before. But I think she was going to write about it without any facts, just to get readers. And it doesn't matter if there's any facts. The damage would already be done. Victor supplied for him. Yeah, Yuri agreed. No rules. Dangerous people to be caught by. He could have lost Ren. The years he had been spending building him up, wasted. The time, the energy, the hope for future. I just... I don't know. Victor stroked the skin on the back of his hands. It's okay, Yuri. Yakov is dealing with her. Remember what I said about him? Yuri nodded, feeling eased already. If there's something he doesn't want turning up in the media, it won't. But she was an online blogger, not with any news. Just makes it easier for him to ruin her reputation, then. Believe me. Nothing about this is going anywhere. She can make all the false accusations she wants. It's not going to do any good. Yuri knew that Victor wouldn't be able to see it when he gave a small smile, but he hoped the other man could feel how grateful he was in his body language. Thank you, Victor. I, I don't know how to handle it. I wasn't prepared. I just need to learn... You don't have to learn how to deal with a situation like that. No one should have to. His eyes glanced down quickly as a thought occurred to him. He quickly took out his phone and said, Look, I'll give you Yakov's number. If something like this happens again, call him, and he can deal with it, all right? He's good at this kind of stuff. Okay. Thanks, Victor. Yuri said, Yuri didn't miss the way Victor's eyes traveled over his costume quickly, then glanced back up at Yuri as if he had to pull them away. Something inside him sparked, but Victor interrupted, Celestino should have his number two anyway. They've talked often enough. It's going to be fine. Okay. He took a deep breath. But it's okay now, Victor. I'm better. I was backed into a corner and I panicked, but... I've calmed now. He almost chuckled at the idea that he was reassuring Victor more than the man was doing for him. Yuri, Victor muttered, but stopped as if he wasn't sure what else he wanted to say. Yuri felt his heart beat, one sharp bump against his chest. He liked his name from Victor's mouth so much. Victor gave him a grin the concern on his face making way for something more playful. And I like saying it as much. Yuri was confused for a slight moment, until he realized he must have said it out loud. He flushed and rushed to apologize, the words coming out in a muddled pile of stutters. Victor simply laughed and pulled him closer into a hug. You know, I like the name Ren is strong and easily recognizable. But the name Yuri is just so much more. It's soft, yet strong. Rolls off the tongue. And that's you. What could be better than that? Yuri was sure Victor didn't understand what he was saying, or how much it meant to him. There was no way he could especially since he didn't know the extent of Yuri's reason behind his persona. And yet it was everything he wanted to hear. 
everything he needed right at that moment. So instead of words, Yuri hugged Victor tighter to him, conveying his thanks in every way he could. The issue was dealt with quickly and quietly. The woman was removed from the premises, her notebook taken, and a warning of if even a whiff of something about the competition was seen on her blogs or anything associated with her, there would be legal action. Honestly, Yuri wasn't too fussed about what happened to her, and it seemed Victor wasn't eager on him knowing too much about it from fear he might panic again. Celestino and Peachy were quick to arrive. Celestino spoke quietly to Yakov, keeping away from them and both throwing their arms about the place. Peachy, however, much like Victor, refused to let Yuri go. Victor was clinging to his right side, his arms wrapped tightly around Yuri's arm. Peachy was clinging to his left, practically trying to clamber upon him. Yuri, you're all right? Peachy asked for what seemed the hundredth time. Yuri didn't grace the question with an answer, having already assured the other a thousand times on top. Had Yuri not already told Victor his name, he'd have been a lot more stressed, because while Peachy was careful to make sure that nothing about Yuri came to light while they were together, it seemed that he reverted back to wanting to call Yuri his real name when he thought something was wrong. Perhaps to ground Yuri, remind him of reality, and pull him back from any panic. He didn't know. But it would have been an interesting way for Victor to find out. He'd told Peachy that Victor knew now, however, and the boy had been beyond excited, exclaiming that Yuri was finally giving this a chance and that he didn't have to be careful around Victor anymore. If anyone was going to accidentally give him away... Yuri knew it was Peachy's. Yuri's fine, he just needs to calm down, Victor assured from around Yuri's shoulder. And he'd already told them millions of times that he was calm, that he could go back and watch the rest of the competition. However, none of his words seemed to be reaching them, so he didn't answer that one either. We can watch anything you want when we get back to the hotel, Yuri, Peachy said gently. Can I join? Victor asked. No, it's my time with Yuri. You hog him enough. But you get to see him in training. I only get to see him in competitions. You already text and call him. Oh, you know that's not the same. If it wasn't so absurd having people fighting over him, Yuri would have laughed. In fact, if it wasn't so weird having the man that he had admired for years clinging to his side and fighting with a 17-year-old boy, he would have probably cried with laughter. Victor was 25, he reminded himself. Not to mention that the outside world, those who didn't know Victor very well, saw him as a professional, a little flirty, and poised. If only they could see him now. Once everything had been done, measures taken, and the whole security of the competition giving the all clear, the whole day had been done. Yuri was a little disappointed, as he wanted to watch the rest. But he was informed that he was still going into the free skate second. The day had been a long one, and Yuri wanted nothing more than to have a hot shower, perhaps even a bath, and go to sleep. He was worried that the next day would be just as stressful. He had woken up a little abruptly, pulled from a nightmare of what would have happened had the woman been able to post what she wanted. And yet, as he got up to brush his teeth and get ready for the day, he felt surprisingly calm. Peachy asked if he was all right as he got up, asked how his night was and if he thought he'd be fine for today. Yuri replied that he was more than ready and he found that they weren't empty words. Yuri replied that he was more than ready, and he found that they weren't empty words. Not a lot of people had heard about what happened, only those immediately involved. 
The situation had been dealt with carefully and quietly, and yet those closest to him still worried. It had been a moment of panic. He knew had he gone through it again, more prepared this time, he could have just walked away and ignored it, got the security himself, and he'd show that to the ones that worried for him. Even after this, he'd gain the gold, take the championship title from Victor. He'd show them that Ren was strong, and so was Yuri because of it. It was going to be a long day. He took his time warming up and watched as the first few competitors began. None of them he had had the chance to speak to as of yet, but he watched and wished them well anyway. He could learn some mannerisms from them, perhaps, or even step sequences, spins or jumps he hadn't encountered before. The drive inside of him to mimic burned. Slowly, the time pushed on, and he watched the skaters pass one by one. He played with his fingers as he watched, huffing out regular breaths, careful in his thoughts. He didn't want to think too much today had been a victim of his mind for far too many times already. He thought about the themes he saw in all of the skaters, nothing too dangerous, and wondered what that theme meant to him. It was a fun game, one that Peachy decided to join in halfway through. Chris's name was called. He glided into the middle of the ice, looking calm and collected. There was a pause as he took a breath, and the audience prepared. And then it was time. The music began, and Chris with it. He began quickly, capturing the audience almost as soon as he started the program. All eyes were on him as he demanded it, pulling in their gazes as he touched the exposed skin of his arms. Yuri watched with the rest of them, always enraptured by Chris not in the same way that he was with Victor. Victor held his love, his admiration. But he could argue that Chris might have held more of his respect. The man was always overlooked, despite his numerous podium finishes. Not to mention, while Yuri and Victor had their own kinds of fans, loyal and sweet, Chris might have had the loudest and the most outrageous. As Yuri thought it, he looked over to a group of women dressed all in pink, with fluffy scarves, long gloves, and massive signs. Yuri wondered how the people behind dealt with it. They were by far the loudest group, screaming every time Chris came near them at the barrier. And perhaps the closest signs there were too obscene without venturing too far. Overall, Yuri loved to spot Chris's fans every competition, finding a lot of entertainment in it. Chris himself said he loved his fans and loved their outlandish behaviors. He loved that he could incite such emotion from people and disregarded the fact that Maybe they were a little too overwhelming. No one wanted to be in the seat next to a group of Chris fans, not with the flailing, the crying, and the signs being thrown about everywhere. Chris performed his program with just as much finesse and grace as he had during the Grand Prix final, if not more. Yuri watched on, appreciating it in a way that he knew this would perhaps be the last time he would see it. Chris used the space of the rink with ease, not one part of his program forced. Yuri supposed that that was what marked a professional. The little details, things that other skaters and the judges would be able to pick up on. Chris finished with a thundering applause, almost drowned out by the screams of the female and some male audience members that made up his fans. Yuri got ready for his own and passed Chris on the way. The man leaned over and wished him luck, to which Yuri replied with a thank you and a promise to steal top spot once more. 
The audience died down as he took his place in the middle of the ice. He reminded himself of his theme, confidence, and that this would be the last time he would skate this, this routine he and Celestino had especially crafted for such a heavy theme. Taking a deep breath, he lost himself in it. The music began, filling the quiet space. He'd heard it so many times before, over and over, hours upon hours in the space of months. Every moment he had spent listening to it filled his head, every feeling he had felt in regard to his theme. It had been the hardest theme he had ever skated to date. It meant so much to him and to other people and was hard to understand by those who gained confidence easily. He'd seen online some of the responses by fans and watchers. Many had said that it was brave coming out with such a theme, when confidence was such a big part of the sport. Others took it the wrong way, and assumed that he had called his theme confidence because he was vain and wanted to draw attention to having more confidence than most. He'd seen many arguments online between the ones who supported him and the ones who just didn't understand what it was Yuri was getting at. Not that he really minded. He had spent a little while yesterday looking at them online when he and Peachy go back to their room. His friend had urged him to stop, worried that it would cause another panic. Rather, it compelled Yuri to better skate his program and make sure that there was no doubt as to why he was actually skating it. He skated into a spread eagle facing the audience and compelling them to watch him, to follow his every movement. He splayed his hands over his mask, drawing attention to the plastic, always reminding the audience of what and who he was. For whatever reason they thought he wore it, it didn't matter because he would live forever in their memories. He wouldn't be easy to forget. He was always nervous about going into jumps, though, no matter how many times he did them. So as the last jump of his routine came, he took a deeper breath than he ever remembered taking and pushed everything into it. He flew through the air, the wind whipping past his head, and landed with a slight wobble. He might have gone into it with a little too much speed, he criticized. But it wasn't too bad. He skated into his final position, open to all, satisfied with their attention. He was here. He hadn't let someone's words get to him, and he was stronger for it. It was a step in the right direction, and he couldn't help but feel proud of it. Victor gave him a firm grip on his shoulder as he passed, a reassuring smile and a gentle gaze. As Victor took to the ice, Yuri waited in the kiss and cry. In these few minutes, barely any time, it would determine whether Victor was to become a defeated world champion or the defender of his title. And when Yuri's scores came through, it only helped to build the tension. The scores were high. Nothing record-breaking, but hard to beat. Even for a legend such as Victor. Yuri watched from where he sat, feeling Peachy's hands grip his right arm like claws, refusing to let go. He felt his heart thump hard against his chest, his breathing coming out in ragged bursts. As Victor's free skate began, he knew he wasn't the only one reacting in such a way. The commentators were oddly quiet, rushing their words if they had to speak at all. The audience were some of the most still Yuri had ever heard or seen. Skaters were leaning on the edges of their seats, mimicking the audience members in their excitement. There was an odd tension in the air, weighing heavily 
almost as if a cloud were forming. Yuri hadn't been aware before that he even stood a chance of winning, or that he had a very real chance of doing so. He'd ignored it, thought it wasn't quite his year yet, and disregarded the points. Looking back, it was part of the reason why he had been unable to rein in his emotions and cried even on the podium. Now aware that he was good enough, he watched with the preparation of it should it happen again. Pushed to defend his title, Victor danced with more determination than before. It was easy to see in the way he took careful breaths before his first combination, adding a double at the end to rack up the points. It was easy to see in the way he pushed more emotion into his expression, pulling in the onlookers until they could look at nothing else. It was also easy to see in the command he had on the ice. He took over every space, left his mark on the surface, curling until his were the deepest out there. His skates made the majority of the sound in the room a lulling repetition of slicing, mesmerizing in the silence. Yuri had always been captivated by the man. Sometimes he just didn't know why. There weren't enough words in any language, nothing that could just capture the essence of Victor, to be able to describe it. Now that he knew the man, he was beyond captivated. If there were a word for that, it was him. Seeing Victor skate was beautiful and brought so many emotions from him. But knowing the man now as he did, he was more captivated by his behavior after his skates when he stood proudly on the podium with Yuri somewhere beside him. When the public image sometimes slipped, where he was a combination of the Victor they knew and the Victor he knew. There were so many things he wanted to know about Victor, so many things he had yet to learn, and it was on the podium that it could be achieved. Then they were in each other's attentions. Competitive, fellow sportsmen with the whole world looking on. As the program concluded, Yuri became more aware of just how today was going to turn out. Victor added more combinations, including a combination spin, and raised one arm in jumps to higher the difficulty. The program was flawless, just as they had come to expect from Victor, and he had raised the bar when it came to competition. He didn't want to lose his title. As he skated into his last pose, Yuri knew for sure he hadn't achieved it. Going into the free skate last was quite the advantage, and Yuri thought about how he wanted to achieve that for next year. Now that he had taken the title from Victor in the Grand Prix Final, he hungered to take it from Victor in Worlds, too. The scores came in, and just as he had expected, Victor retained his title as world champion. Yuri coming in second, and Chris third just as it had been before. Victor's fans exclaimed their relief in the crowds, a few groans here and there from some audience members and journalists, as if it was a bad thing. Yuri didn't think so at all. He stood on the podium looking up at Victor, a place he had stood before. He aimed to be the one on top next worlds. Looking down at Victor once more, a sly grin on his face as he took the title from the man. As he bent low to receive the medal, Yuri smiled behind his mask, silver shining brightly around his neck, still a brilliant position. Having seen Victor rise further beyond to retain his title in answer to competition, and seeing Victor's face light up as he received his medal, an expression he hadn't seen in a very long time. 
Yuri vowed that he would keep pushing the other man until his love for the sport and for competition was regained. They smiled and waved at the audience, holding their medals in their hands. Yuri watched in thrall as Victor rose his and kissed the gold. An eyebrow raised in Yuri's direction. Something burned in the Japanese man. Whether an answer to competition or a desire to be the one touching those lips, he didn't know. He just knew that he was going to give it his all. Confidence is a weird concept. It creates and destroys people, causes problems that have no business being there, and raises empires. Yuri was still very much on the journey to achieving his. But oddly enough, he felt like having a theme such as this had grown him as a person. He'd feared at the beginning that he wasn't enough to skate something so meaningful. Now he had a hunger residing deep in his belly for it. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. This has been Chapter 16 of November Secret. Written by Lana Berry. Narrated by Serd. Theme music, Spirited Away. Right then, so that's it, that's all. I hope you will join me again next time. Until then... Happy listening.